Now, Friday Night Football, presented by Monteith's Best One Tire and Auto Care. Welcome to Friday Night Football. It's week two, and this is a special one because it's the first time that everybody is playing football. That's right, Michigan joining the fun with the beginning of their season. And we've got a special spot in our show carved out for them. We'll start here in the Hoosier State, where teams are now on their second week of football. It has been four years since we've last had the backyard brawl back in 2019, and tonight the Mishawaka Cavemen came to Freed Field to take on the Penn Kingsmen. Early in the first, Brady Fisher coming out fighting, breaks the line of scrimmage, shrugging off Kingsman. One finally brought down. Good first down there for Mishawaka. Couple, was late, couple plays later, Fisher again, this time seeing green. Getting into the secondary, taking off for a house call, making a statement for the first score of the game. It's seven nothing Mishawaka on top, but Fisher is not the only quarterback tonight proving he can get it done with his legs. Enter Nolan McCullough, quarterback of the Penn Kingsman, and he's going to take off with a burst of speed, putting a couple cavemen in a blender before bringing him <laughs> down for the first down. And then nearing the end of the first, Kingsman knocking on the door. McCullough is going to hand it off and let his teammate do the work with the legs. Jake Bayless getting it done, bursting into the end zone, tying things after seven after the extra point. Penn is going to go on to win and keep Mishawaka off the scoreboard the rest of the way. 28-7 the final. Here's the winning head coach after the game. Uh, had us on our heels early and our guys got, you know, it's hard to simulate what they do and, and uh, the speed they do it at. And I think our defense uh, adjusted to that as the game went on and played well. But, you know, we knew that they were going to keep battling. And uh, offensively, we made some big plays, came out of the half, a big play from Nolan, and, and uh, uh, made some big plays into the first half as well, too. So, I mean, great team win, good, great on special teams as well. So, happy for the boys. Well, if that was game of the week, this is the game of the week runner up. Riley visiting John Glenn, both teams 1 and 0. First quarter, Cats up 7 0 early. Austin White floats it up to Peyton Byard, and he's got space right into the bread basket, and he's gone. 14 to nothing using those long legs. I feel you, man. Those, when you're all legs, all you got to do is let the stride do the work. <laughs> Glenn right. held scoreless. Next, Riley possession. White floating up again. Wow. This time, Bayer beating two Falcons. Just waiting for it. <laughs> Cats going up 20 to nothing. Their defense getting it done as well. John Glenn trying to get something going offensively. Chase Miller floating it up. But Travion Thomas on the coverage. Glenn held off the scoreboard tonight. Riley gets a big win, 20 to nothing. Great win for those Cats. Looking at a couple of other scores from around the area. South Bend Clay still searching for their first win of the season. They go down big to Boone Grove, 53 to 6. Elsewhere, South Bend Washington with a big loss as well as they fall to Bremen, 42 to 7. Let's head out to the Jake, where Concord's hosting their first home game of the season, looking to remain undefeated against 0-1 Jimtown. Jimmy's marched down the field on their opening drive, set up for a field goal, but it's blocked. The Minutemen bending but not breaking on defense. On offense, though, they break things wide open. Junior running back Jerron Thomas taking the handoff, weaves his way through traffic around the line of scrimmage, and it's off to the races. Touchdown Concord. It'd be 7-0 Minutemen. Home fans are loving it, pumping them up with a little bit of push-ups in, in the student section. But a few series later, Jimtown responds with a big run of their own. What looked like a QB sneak winds up going the distance. Bishop Williams, 60 plus yards <laughs> for his team's first score. Some good back and forth early. But Concord rides the home crowd momentum to their second win of the year. Final score, 27 to 10. Second win for Concord after knocking off Elkhart in week one. Some more final scores. Here's one of the ones we're looking for. Osceola Grace taking on Hammond Knoll on the road. We'll have a final score on our website for you. South Bend Adams, they did get a win. Going on the road to Logansport, 23-22. Over the berries. Close game. Great win for the Eagles there. Let's go to Interra Field now in Middlebury, where the self-service is bad, but the football is good. <laughs> Elkhart and Northridge scoring early and often in this one. Here, Northridge should be hemmed up on fourth down, but they toss a screen out wide for big yards. The senior, Chase Clark, has the defense chasing him, and they're not going to catch him. He puts the Raiders up by a pair of touchdowns, 28-14. If you're not impressed by the short passing game, don't worry. Clark can go deep as well. This time, quarterback Braden Clark finds him with a gorgeous deep ball. Not quite a touchdown, but it put his team in the red zone. And a few plays later, little resistance from McLean Miller as he saunters into the end zone off the edge. Elkhart makes a late second half push, but Northridge holds on for the victory. They win 35 to 29. Taking a look at a couple of other scores in the area, Northwood with a huge win over Portage, putting up 49 to win 49-7. And Warsaw Chesterton on the opposite end of the spectrum there. A low scoring affair, but a great game. Warsaw comes out on top 8-6. to six. 
We have not seen a stat line yet, but you know Nitro Tuggle is on that Northwood oh, stat line yeah. for sure. <laughs> Out in New Carlisle, New Prairie trying to get win number one, taking on Goshen second quarter. Cougars up by five. Marshall Kamichek has got to lead the offense a long way. He's going to get it done in one play. Breaking a tackle. He's off to the races. The QB keeper goes 63 yards for the wow. touchdown. He ran for over 1,000 last year. There's 63 to add to his total. Make a 22-15 after the extra point. Now, their state champion softball team also honored tonight at halftime. They're the first team in school history to win a team state championship. It's also the first state championship in softball for LaPorte County. The Cougars got the win to help celebrate 29-10 over Goshen. Some more scores tonight. North Judson going on the road. They knock off Kasson 52-7. Sorry, that scoreboard should be flipped. <laughs> LaVille also got the win 22-16 over Triton. Now let's head out to Culver Academy He's taking a visit to Mishawaka to take on the Marion Knights. Late in the first quarter, game tied at seven. So the Knights looking to come away with some points. They're going for the field goal, but the snaps bobbled and Lucas Primrose is overwhelmed by a group of Culver defenders there. Very unlucky spot to be in, but that forced a turnover on downs. A couple plays later, Culver with the ball now. Michael McCulkin drops back, fires a laser. To the wrong team, Chase Bays for the Marion Knights coming up with a huge interception, giving the Knights the ball back inside of enemy territory. So a new Marion drive, let's see what they do with it. Knights looking to break the tie. Bryce Lassane taking the shotgun snap, settles into the pocket and floats a dime into the hands of William Ooh. Owens. Comes down with the ball over the defender inside the Culver 10 yard line. Now a little bit later in this one, in the second quarter, Knights knocking on the door and this time it's Braxton Brooks getting the toss outside, pushes his way towards Paydirt as Marion breaks the tie there. They go on to win this one by a final score of 21 to 14. And some more score updates for you. The Fairfield Falcons taking their first loss of the season to Heritage. They dropped this one 39 to 17. Elsewhere, South Central got their first win of the season. They beat Culver 44 to 22. In Fort Wayne, South Bend St. Joe taking on the South Side Archers. St. Joe also looking for their first win. Second quarter, they're up 7 0 and they're driving. Handoff goes to Noah Batsamzi. He pinballs his way for six more. Make it 14 0. St. Joe on top after the extra point. Later in the second, if the run game's working, why not do it again? Gives the handoff. One broken tackle, two broken tackle. Cuts outside. And he's going to be tackled just inside the end zone. More so slipped down. Looks like the <laughs> turf monster got him. And then St. Joe punches it in. Dallas Downey mossing the defender in the back of the end zone. St. Joe picking up win number one. Big fashion. 41 3 the final over Southside. Some more scores tonight. Tippy Valley going on the road, knocking off Rochester 39 to 8. Meanwhile, West Noble getting the win at home 20 to 12 over Wawasee. And that's halftime for us, but stick around. We'll have more high school football action coming your way. In our second half, we head to opening week in Michigan. Stick around.